mornings in effect for Orange and Person counties until 315 this afternoon. You're looking at the uh, wide view of the squall line moving through the sand hills through Moore County, Chatham County, Alamance County, up towards Roxborough, and into Southern Virginia. So right now it is Orange County and Person counties that are under the severe thunderstorm warnings. We also have tornado warnings in effect for Caswell County, also Alamance counties uh, that expire at 245 this afternoon. And an impressive look uh, on the radar of those storms moving through Caswell and Alamance County. So I'm going to zoom into this area and show you what's happening. Uh, no, no other warnings south of where we're looking at right now. So I'm going to put the uh, latest picture up here and do a storm track from uh, this cell up towards the northeast for Person County. And we're looking at Cheeks Crossroads, Holly Meadows, Perry Hills, Eflin, Stagecoast Forest, Dimmicks Mill, and Kingsboro Estates that are in the uh, severe thunderstorm warning that does expire at 315 this afternoon. Within that severe thunderstorm warning, there's the potential for winds in excess of 58 miles per hour. Large hail is a potential as well, perhaps up to golf ball sized hail. We've had no indications of any hail reports of that size yet. In fact, no reports of hail yet, but there's the potential there. And uh, this cell continues to move towards the northeast rather rapidly at about 60 to 65 miles per hour. Now, we're getting reports of a lot of trees down in northern Alamance County with a storm that just moved through there. Now, there is a very good signature on the velocity data or the velocity uh, information that... Uh, that I want to show you through Alamance County and also in Caswell County that indicates the potential for a tornado there. So let's jump over to that product. And what you're looking at here, and we show this all the time, is the velocity data. We're looking at the movement of the raindrops inside the thunderstorms. Now, this is a little outside our viewing area, but we're noticing three what we call couplets or areas of rotation. One here, there's another one here, and then there's another one that looks quite interesting here. So there are three potential areas of rotation that we're watching. Now, there is that uh, Caswell County tornado warning that remains in effect. Now, they did cancel the tornado warning for uh, parts of Alamance County uh, at 221 this afternoon, but uh, let's see. Okay, that's been canceled. There's a new severe thunderstorm warning that uh, actually continues for Chatham, Guilford, and Randolph until 3 o'clock this afternoon. And that uh, continues again till 3 o'clock. So what we're looking at here, I'm trying to read information and talk at the same time, so I should probably just quit talking and, and look at the information and absorb it before I open my mouth, so to speak. But what we're looking at here is the, uh, the raindrops moving away from the radar site and moving towards the radar site, so we're seeing rotation in this part of Caswell County. Also here, it looks like another couplet with the uh, raindrops moving towards the radar site here. Actually, I should scratch that, moving away from the radar site here and moving towards the radar site. So we're seeing that rotation here. And then another one right over Burlington and Graham. And these are all rapidly moving towards the northeast at about 60 to 65 miles per hour. So let me jump back to the uh, radar view and see what else is going on. And again, this is uh, all part of that squall line. What we're generally expecting with the squall line is damaging straight line winds, and inside it, there could be embedded tornadoes, which we are seeing in Caswell and Alamance counties. And Nate, I've noticed that you switched the radar over to a different setting. Is there anything in particular that you're looking at? I'm looking for uh, any of those couplets you're talking about. Uh, with our live radar, the, the dual Doppler 5000, we're able to scan once a minute and uh, get that velocity information a lot more uh, quickly than if we use the uh, government radars and uh, what we're looking at here are the winds inside the thunderstorm blowing away from the radar which is uh, again to the southeast of Raleigh and then a general circulation in toward the radar not uh, the cleanest picture but if we look at the uh, the next red radar you definitely get that general sense of in toward the radar and then away from and right over Burlington just to the northeast of Burlington a very impressive little uh, signature that will eventually be moving into northern Orange County that holds together so if you're watching us from Mebane the storm's probably going to miss you off toward the north but who it's going to be really close, but if you live, uh, let's say, north of Mebane, on uh, this is going to be Highway 119 there to the north of Mebane or on 49 north of Hall River 
or on Highway 62. Any of these roads here, as they push off toward into uh, northern uh, portions of Alamance County, up toward uh, northern Orange County, these areas will be under the gun with this. This is a very impressive uh, uh, radar signature there of rotation that we're seeing. And uh, you know, I worked for a number of years in Texas, and this was sort of what, sort of typical what we'd see uh, if we had something on the ground. So I'm I'm very concerned about what's going on in the atmosphere above Burlington. Even though the radar beam at this uh, at this level is almost a mile up, there's still a very good circulation in that thunderstorm and something we really need to pay attention to. As we put the uh, laps on for you to show you how it's moving, you can see it's moving in generally from the southwest toward the northeast. Mike, what you got? Data warning has been issued for Orange uh, County. There we go. Until three o'clock, and I'm assuming that that's the cell that you're looking at right now. Let's yeah. go back to uh, what you're showing since you already have that up. Yeah, it is that uh, this cell. It's moving out of uh, northern Alamance County toward uh, northern Orange County. We'll uh, zoom up a little bit. There's actually a couple. There's the one just to the south. We'll zoom out. There's the one just over Burlington, and another one off toward the north of Prospect Hill in southern Caswell County. This will be moving toward Person County, but we'll uh, focus on this one down here toward. Burlington again. That storm moving off toward the northeast. Mike, do you have a movement on that storm? Uh, moving northeast at 65 miles per hour. I'm trying to bring the text data up. Let me confirm that uh, when I get it here. Uh, moving towards the northeast at 65 miles per yeah. hour. Uh, the radar indicated a possible tornado 13 miles southwest of the car community. Yep. And you've got car on your map there. Uh, the damaging straight line winds in excess of 58 miles per hour are also likely with the storm outside of the, uh, uh, the tornado threat as well. But I was looking at the uh, shear, the, the shear signature and the, the possible shear out of this. We're talking about 80 mile per hour shear, 80 to 90 mile per hour shear, and that's a, a pretty significant what we call couplet or shear marker yep. or shear statement uh, for North Carolina. It's been quite some time since I've seen a couplet that strong in North Carolina. Yep. And what we're looking at, I've switched back over to our live radar because again, the the storms are moving so fast that in between waiting for the updates from the uh, the next radar, as you can see, our radar sweeping by. The uh, there's a lot happening, and you can uh, we'll do the we'll move the storm track here up to where the uh, rotation is likely to be. And you can see now we updated the time for car at uh, 231, Prospect Hill at 234, which is really within the next uh, five to 10 minutes. So uh, if you are um, in any of these communities in the northwestern corner of Orange County, southern Caswell County, or even the southwestern corner of Person County, just to the southwest of Roxboro, this is heading in your direction and you need to take uh, shelter from this thunderstorm. We got the tips up on the 13. Can show you those again. You need to be inside your house in uh, a lowest level of your home if you can stay away from the windows get to a basement or an interior room again put as many walls between you and the tornado as you can that's going to be your best defense if you don't have a, 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 a like an interior bathroom or a closet or maybe a, a cupboard under the stairs if you will uh, then uh, get under a sturdy piece of furniture uh, like a or in a bathtub and uh, we used to tell people in Texas if you can drag a you know couch cushion or something over there to protect your head now, obviously if you're uh, listening to us on the radio um, or following this on um, via a live stream over the internet and you're in a car, you need to get out of that car, you need to find sturdy shelter. Same thing for folks watching us here in mobile homes. I'm going to zoom back in tighter. We'll put some streets on this for you, give you an idea of where this storm is going to help you to orient you a little bit better geographically. And this is a highway here north of uh, Prospect Hill. This is, of course, Highway 86 that runs into Chapel Hill down toward the south. And uh, we're not looking at anything in Chapel Hill at the moment, at least with this particular thunderstorm, but uh, it's something we need to keep in mind. The uh, circulation area is going to be right in here. This is what we're looking at. And what we're seeing here is the winds are blowing the raindrops or this drier air into the thunderstorm and pushing the higher reflectivity back into the thunderstorm. And so that's what we're looking at. And maybe even an indication that it's, it's trying to wrap around a little bit. So I'm really concerned about this now for folks in car. You need to be in your shelter place uh, right now. And if you're not there, you do really need to get there very shortly, especially uh, in, in the car community north of Cedar Grove. Along Highway 86 uh, as it moves into Caswell County. This is a, a very dangerous situation given that uh, we've got the atmospheric set up right now um, for tornadoes to develop and to continue to develop. We're continuing to watch the sweep come around, the latest information, the storm just moving along. This is going to be, I'm going to clear off the streets here and uh, 
We start over. This is Highway 49. It's moving just to the north of Highway 49, just into uh, the western part of the car community in northwestern Orange County. There's a uh, likelihood that there is a tornado in that thunderstorm or a developing tornado potentially uh, for folks in car. You do need to be in your shelter place. Uh, same thing for uh, Prospect Hill. Same thing for uh, our friends in Gordonton. Basically, if you live along Highway 49 uh, to the uh, northwest of uh, Chapel Hill there in Carr, Prospect Hill, Gordonton, as it moves into Person County, you do need to be in your safe place right now. Mike, you're looking at the velocity data. What are you seeing over there? Uh, there there's just another signature up in Caswell County at Person County on the line there. Uh, you're looking at this one here. Let me highlight it. This is the one that Nate was looking at over here in Alamance County, moving towards the northeast. But we're also watching this area here. It looks like some strong winds. Uh, Caswell, Person County. So there's not a tornado warning for Person County, but eventually I would believe this cell would be moving to the northeast quick enough that uh, Person County will be under warning at some point. Now, these cells are moving so fast, and Mike Moss and Nate and I were talking earlier, they're moving so fast that, that there may be very little warning. The storm may be on top of you before or a tornado warning is issued. So just keep that in mind. And we've got more time to go by before we see all this out of the area. Now, what I wanted to do was take a look at the tornado watch that's in effect for the entire viewing area until 9 o'clock this evening. And it includes Southern Virginia, our entire viewing area in North Carolina, and also southward into South Carolina. These are all the warnings that are taking place right now. And again, this is along that squall line we've been talking about. It extends northward into Virginia. Uh, Southern Virginia counties that are in yellow are severe thunderstorm warnings. Those pink ones that you see are the tornado warnings that are in effect. Again, it's Orange County, Alamance County, Caswell County, so far Person County, not in a tornado warning, but you have a severe thunderstorm warning that's still in effect. And then farther to the south and west in the Sand Hills, it's Richmond County, it's Montgomery County, Moore County, Chatham County under severe thunderstorm warning, and also farther south into South Carolina. So this is a very nasty line. We expect straight line wind damage out of this in excess of 58 miles per hour. And of course, there is that potential for embedded tornadoes inside this line. Here are the lightning strikes as the system moves towards the east. And just over the past couple of hours, this has really come to life. It's moving into an air mass that is very buoyant. Uh, it's more unstable. The air mass is very juicy. So we're going to see this very intense line continue to either maintain itself or grow in intensity as it moves into central and eastern North Carolina over the next few hours. Now, we've also, outside of these thunderstorms, have been seeing gusty winds. Before I left to come into work today, I secured the umbrella that's out in the backyard, uh, made sure any loose articles uh, were secured because they're going to get blown around today, even outside of any storms. The latest wind gust at the Raleigh Durham International Airport was up to 40 miles per hour, 45 there in Irwin, you see in Harnett County. But just a short while ago, I saw a gust there at 49 miles per hour. Farther south at the Fayetteville Regional Airport, they're reporting a wind gust at 41, 45 mile per hour wind gust at Lumberton in Robinson County. So again, outside of any thunderstorms, we are going to see gusty winds and they will only become more extreme inside the squall line as it moves on by. And again, we'll just stress once that squall line moves past your community, it looks like things will pretty much clear up. Here's a broader perspective of what's going on with the system. We have low pressure that's sitting over the Ohio Valley. You can see the counterclockwise rotation. But what's happening is the jet stream is moving across North Carolina right now, and we're in a favor favored zone for rapid ascent in the atmosphere, helping to give life to these strong thunderstorms that tower well up into the atmosphere. So we do have the potential for large tornadoes. In fact, the Storm Prediction Center earlier this afternoon raised our threat level to a high risk. And we mentioned a while ago that the last time North Carolina saw a high risk for severe weather occurred in March 28th in 1984 when we had a large tornado outbreak in the southeastern part of the state, which included uh, the Red Springs area in Robinson County, uh, also uh, Columbus County. It was uh, Wayne County, the Mount Olive area. Uh, folks have been tweeting and Facebooking all afternoon saying, yeah, I remember that one. That's the one that's the tornado stayed on the ground for a long period of time. We had a lot of damage. There were fatalities out of that one as well uh, that night. It was a very bad situation. So since we are in a high risk, that potential is there to see tornadoes that are very strong, that are not typical here in North Carolina. They will be what we call long track, where they stay on the ground for a long period of time. Typically, when we're on the air talking about tornado warnings, it's under a slight risk. Uh, the tornadoes are weak. They stay on the ground for a short period of time, then they jump back up in the clouds and it comes back down again. The tornadoes that we could see this afternoon and that may be ongoing now in Alamance County are the kind that are very large and could be the stove 
pipe kind or maybe even a wedge tornado and could stay on the ground for a considerable amount of time which could create some significant damage. So far we have had no ground truth of that tornado in Alamance County. County until 315. Okay. This is a storm to the southwest of Concord or seven miles to the west of Roxboro, moving northeast at 65. So, so this is that uh, circulation just to the north of the one in northern Orange County that we've been talking about. Okay, so let's go back to uh, Weather 7 if we can, and then we'll uh, show you this. We're looking at the uh, velocity, and this is okay. the, uh, Thank you. the one that Nate was talking about, and I pointed out a moment ago. There are two different or uh, velocity couplets, I should say, or shear couplets that we're looking at. This is the one here that has prompted the tornado warning for Person County. And again, that is until 315. The uh, storm is moving rapidly to the northeast at 65 miles per hour. So it's going to blow through your community rather quickly. And then here's the other one that Nate was talking about earlier in Alamance County affecting parts of Orange County. And that is rapidly moving to the northeast at 65 miles per hour. If you're in this region between northern Alamance County Northern Orange County, Southern Caswell County, and Person County, you need to seek shelter now. You need to protect yourself, get into the lowest level of your home, preferably a basement if you have it, an interior room, a closet, uh, a room underneath the staircase that's away from any windows. You need to find shelter because these are nasty looking couplets or shear uh, couplets uh, showing rotation on the radar here. So let me take this off and let me uh, put some numbers on here and we get an idea of what kind of shear we're talking about. Now, moving away from the radar site, we're looking at a shear of up to 57 miles per hour. Uh, towards the radar site, we're talking about, that's 23, uh, 24. So we're talking about up to 60, 70 miles per hour uh, shear, which is quite impressive. And it looks like we got a new uh, image here. So let me uh, move this up to the northeast just a bit. And I'll zoom in and I'll put some communities. There's the Concord community that uh, is in the path of the storm. Uh, also, we have Long Store. There's the Leesburg community. Uh, there's Woodsdale. Also, the Cepho community. All of you should be uh, in your shelter right now, away from any windows, uh, and to protect yourself from the uh, potential for a tornado. Again, this is a radar-indicated tornado, but by looking at this signature here, this looks very, very impressive. Moving to the northeast at 65 miles per hour. So in a short period of time, this will be out of your area and up towards southern Virginia. So we'll take a wider view. These are the two couplets or shear signatures that we're looking at that look the most threatening. We don't see anything else farther south that looks threatening at this time, but it's generally this area here from Person County through Caswell County, Alamance, and Orange Counties that uh, look pretty nasty as we speak. So let me uh, go back over to the uh, radar view, and the little circles that you see are telltale signs for us that there's the potential for rotation inside these uh, thunderstorms. Okay. Uh, just to the north of Roxboro, okay. that would suggest that we've got some uh, strong winds potentially making it or wrapping around whatever circulation we've got. So you're talking I about wanna, a rain wrap tornado? Yeah, this uh, may be. I want to show you, uh, if we can switch over, there we go. Uh, you can see the darker oranges here in this little bit of a curve that you're looking at. This is an indication that we may have uh, some winds trying to wrap around the back side of this thunderstorm potentially uh, causing some uh, damaging winds. I'm going to draw a st a, uh, or put the street name on here. This is going to be between Roxboro and Concord on Highway 57 there, and it's going to move to the north of Roxboro. But, man, that is a way close for comfort if you live in Roxboro, especially in the northern half of that. I think that uh, if, we, if we're seeing anything there, uh, that's where the tornado is going to be. <clears throat> Uh, with that uh, just to the northwest of Roxburgh. And again, we're looking at our live radar data, maybe even an indication that uh, we do have that circulation rain wrapped. So you're not going to be able to see this one. It's not like, even though we're talking about thunderstorms that are, are very strong or could be uh, producing strong tornadoes like we see in the plains, you're not going to be able to see them like you see them in the plains. The video that we've been showing in the tornado in Oklahoma, the terrain here, the cloud, or the, the low deck of clouds, and the uh, trees and hills are going to make it very difficult to be able to see anything. So uh, you do need to... Uh, you, your first instinct is going to be, well, I need to confirm what I'm looking at or what we're talking about. Yeah. 
And uh, really, what you need to do is just get into your safe place. Yeah, if you, you don't need in, to go outside and see, see if there's a yeah, tornado around. Exactly. If you live in uh, Roxborough or north of Roxborough between 57 and 15501, you need to be in your safe place uh, pretty much uh, right now. And looking at the velocity data off of our live radar, this uh, glob of green here indicates winds. Typically, the reds indicate winds that are blowing away from the radar. But because the winds are blowing so fast, it's actually causing the radar to misinterpret it. This is the, the Doppler effect or the Doppler dilemma that uh, we talk about in meteorology classes. Bottom line for you is we've got some very fast winds blowing in the atmosphere and a good indication that we've got a circulation now just to the north of Roxborough moving toward Highway 15 or Highway 501. You need to be uh, in your safe place if you live in Roxborough or points north. Okay, hey, Nate, I noticed something on, on the... Uh the chat here that mm -hmm. a new tornado warning has been issued for Person County. It looks like that one that you were talking about in Alamance County and Orange County is now moving into threatening Person County at least mm -hmm. because they're saying that this storm is moving to the northeast at 70 miles per hour. So these things are moving fast. Right. Um, and so it's not only the one that's north of Roxboro, but the other one that's coming in from the southwest approaching Roxboro that we have to watch out as well. Yep. To zoom back out. I've, I've lost the the clarity of that signature, which is good news. But we're still concerned about what may be going on to the north of Roxborough. I'm going to re-edit this, uh, update our storm track based on where I think we might uh, have the. Hey Nate. Yeah. While you do that, let's go to Ken Smith because I understand he has some information for us. All right, Mike. We're, Nate, we appreciate that. Now, uh, as we brace for this storm and as Mike and Nate keep us updated, we want to remind you again about WRAL weather call. We'll let you know when severe weather threatens your home. You can. Receive a phone call for up to three numbers any time of day. For more information and to sign up for that service, just go to WREL.com, search weather call. The service is a nominal fee, just about eight bucks a year. We're also getting reports of a weather damage in our area. In Cumberland County specifically, deputies tell us a tree fell on a house on Camden Road. Right now, we're not hearing of anyone getting hurt. Also, there's no word on the extent of that damage. Staying in Cumberland County, our Brian Mems joining us on the phone right now with a close call for family in that area. Brian, what can you tell us? Okay, I wish we could show you uh, some, some live pictures of the scene, but the wind here is just so vicious. It's so strong that it's not safe for us That's to right. put up our, our transmitter mast, which sticks 50-plus feet into the air. We just can't do it right, right now. But I am sitting outside of the home uh, with the woman who was inside. Holy She's God. 73 years old. And I can tell you that a big, thick branch uh, of a tree... Uh, fell onto the single-wide mobile home. It's at the end of a sandy road. It happened about 25 minutes ago. The woman, who was wheelchair-bound, was inside with her grandson, who I believe is in his 20s. Uh, oh, he's only 16. Okay, he's only 16 years old. The two of them were sitting on the sofa. In fact, I, to get out of the wind, I'm, I'm sitting inside the, the minivan with the woman who was inside the house. Her name is Christine Chapman. Uh, the wind is blowing so so badly outside that you couldn't hear me over the phone. But she's sitting here with me. And Miss Chapman, why don't you just tell me uh, what what you heard, what you were doing when this happened? We were sitting there watching a movie. Me and my grandson, and uh, he all of a sudden the trailer uh, started shaking. I heard her pouring, and uh, that's when uh, my grandson, all his grandma, hit his hands up, and that thing fell down. Wow, my gosh! It must have made a fearsome sound. It, it did. I thought a tornado. So where are you going now? I don't know yet. You won't be able to stay here this evening? No, and all my kids is still filled up, so I've got to find somewhere to go. Mm -hmm. And I, I overheard some of the uh, authorities out here talking about the Red Cross, so so the Red Cross may be able to put you up for the next few nights, because you can't stay here tonight. Uh, I know, I want to. <laughs> uh, scary experience. Well, and you're not hurt, you're okay? Yes, sir, I'm fine, thank you, good Lord. Absolutely, okay. It is quite, uh, quite significant. Uh, can you hear me all right? You said, okay. Okay, how about now? Can you hear me? Uh, I'm... Yeah. All right, uh, Brian, uh, hold that thought. Uh, Mike has a tornado warning for us. Mike? Well, we have new tornado warnings for Chatham, Lee, and Moore County until 3.30. Let's go to Weather 7 if we can. Now, you're looking at the squall line, but let me uh, let you look at that while I get more information. The storm is located in Moore County right now, so let's zoom down there and uh, see what we're looking at. Uh, another pretty impressive signature showing up uh, just near Carthage right now. 
The National Weather Service radar is indicating the possibility of a tornado uh, in central Moore County. It's northern Moore County, it's uh, Lee County, and also south central Chatham County that's in the tornado warning until 3.30. The radar indicated the possibility of a tornado around Carthage, uh, moving to the northeast at 60 miles per hour. The locations impacted include Carthage, Cumnock, and the Sanford community. And again, that circle that you see is what we call a shear marker, and it is telling us where the rotation is with this thunderstorm, and it appears to be over the Carthage area as we speak. So let me uh, give, get a better perspective here, and then I'll put a storm track. And you can see all those little white dots are the lightning strikes, so there's a heck of a lot of lightning out of the storm as it rapidly races towards the northeast at about 60 miles per hour. So I'll do a storm track generally from the, the front of the storm moving to the northeast at 60. Again, these are rapidly moving. So when they move through your community, they're going to blow through fast. So it's Carthage, 245, that's right now. White Hill Community, 253. Quail Ridge, 255. Owls Nest, 258. The Tramway Community, which of course is in Lee County. Country Lane Estates, Trails End, and Western Hills, and there are many more communities in between, but the, it's not showing every community. If you're in this line or in this area, you need to seek shelter immediately because there's a pretty decent uh, signature. In fact, I know, Nate, you're looking at the live Fayetteville Doppler radar. Can you jump back to what you had and show? Yeah. It's a pretty good signature. Yeah, what we're looking at here are the velocities. Again, this is our live Fayetteville radar, uh, the only radar in the southern part of our viewing area, and it's really capturing a really interesting picture. The reds are uh, winds blowing away from the radar, but what we're looking at here is this pocket within this thunderstorm of winds blowing toward the radar, indicative that we do have um, some outflow, some thunderstorm outflow that's uh, coming in and perhaps spinning something up here. You can see the... Uh, <coughs> the uh, arrows, the storm markers starting to catch up with this particular thunderstorm a little bit. We switch back over to our more conventional display and again much like uh, the one up to the north there's a lot of rain around this one and again it's in this area here that we're going to be concerned around Carthage. If you live in Hillcrest or Carthage in Moore County this is a this is your time. You need to get into your safe place, get into that lowest level of your home or wherever you happen to be. If you're in a car, you need to go ahead and uh, find sturdy shelter. And by the way, we are being simulcast on Mix 101.5. So if you lose power or if you're going down to a basement, you don't have a TV, take, carry a radio with you and uh, go with that as well. Yep. And uh, as well, you can also uh, stream on the internet, so keep that in mind as well. But we do have a lot of, uh, of rotation with this thunderstorm. Look at the uh, velocities again. And it's this pocket here right on top of Carthage that uh, we're concerned about with this particular thunderstorm as uh, it moves through portions of Moore County. Ahead of that, notice the purples here along and north of Highway 15501 to the northeast of Carthage. There's going to be some hail probably in that as we uh, switch over at our storm threat. The purples indicating a potential for some hail. This was as of a few minutes ago. This is based off of the, the uh, government data, and this purple indicating uh, the potential for some hail out of this. And a little while ago, we had a report of golf ball-sized hail from one of the thunderstorms in Ashboro. And so this atmosphere is more or less configured the same way there as it is here, so I wouldn't be surprised to be getting some uh, large hail reports out of this thunderstorm as well. But the uh, circulation that we're concerned about with this storm, as we look at it in our live Fayetteville Doppler, is now pushing uh, to the uh, just barely to the east of Carthage, but along 15501 and uh, toward uh, Cameron. That's the area that we're concerned about. Also, want to just bring to your attention that uh, some of these thunderstorms now putting down some significant rainfall. We've had some flood advisories issued for Durham, Granville, Orange, and Person counties. Basically, means that if you're out, in, if you're out and about, which we hope you're not, but uh, that we do have the potential for a little bit of. Uh, of some standing water and some roadways and, and whatnot. So again, rotation near the community of Carthage and Hillcrest in the central portions of Moore County. This one moving toward the northeast at about 60 to 65 miles per hour. Mike? And we're still, Nate, looking at the uh, tornado warnings for Person County. And let's go to the uh, dual Doppler 5000 radar. Again, there is the squall line. Every circle that you see pop up as this is time-lapsed is the indication of some rotation in the atmosphere. And so far in the Raleigh area, Fayetteville and Points East, we're not seeing any of that. In fact, what you may notice, at least on here, is we're not seeing those discrete supercells, at least a short way ahead of the squall line. So this might be just congealing into one main squall line. 
So we have the straight line wind threat, and we also have the threat of isolated tornadoes embedded inside the squall line. What I want to do is zoom up into Person County and see what's happening with that storm. We'll take a look at the radar signature first. Now, if you are in this vicinity, you're on listening to the radio. Radio. We're on Mix 101.5. You need to be in your safe place, as Nate's been saying, and take shelter. You don't need to uh, be outside looking at the tornado and, and trying to search for it. That's not the safe thing to do. But there's the uh, radar signature. We'll time lapse this so you can see the very heavy rainfall that is moving through uh, northern Orange County, the Hillsborough area, up towards Person County. Notice there are no circles now in Orange County. The threat has passed. The tornado threat is now into southern Person County and also northern Person County. I want to switch this over to the velocity data so we can see what's going on with that. And there are two distinct signatures we're still watching. The one moving out of northern Orange County, the other one in northern Person County. There's the one there. There is the other one here, northern Orange County and southern Person County. And I want to zoom in to each one individually and take a look at what communities are in line to uh, be affected. Yes,